Hello, Aldo Figueroa here, and this is part two of our three-part series of different tutorials. Part one covered how to create a turnaround uh, turntable animation. You can see right here as I'm scrolling back and forth within the timeline, I created this camera. Uh, within part two, I'm going to show you how to create an ambient occlusion node. And then within part three, I'm going to show you how to render out this animation uh, within here. Uh, we are going to create our ambient occlusion node. Um, just a couple things of note. I am using Maya 2011. So if these features have changed within Maya 2012 and Maya 2013, do make the note of those different changes. So let's go ahead and begin. The first thing that I want to do, I want to make sure that I have Mental Ray turned on. It is a plugin that is not turned on by default. So to do this, we're going to go to Window settings preferences and select the plugin manager within here I want to navigate usually right here up at the top I want to navigate to this Maya 2 MR Maya tool mental ray I'm gonna check loaded it's already turned on and let's go ahead and close this what this does this allows you to use mental ray plus it allows you to use some of the mental ray features such as ambient occlusion now we're gonna go into the hypershade we're going to go into Window Rendering Editors and select Hypershade. Within the Hypershade, we are going to create a surface shader. So don't mind that I have all these other shaders here. I'm going to create a surface shader, which is this guy right here. Click on it. Now mine says Surface Shader 2. I created one previously and deleted it. So um, if as you create yours, if it says Surface Shader 1, that's expected. So great, we created the surface shader, but we're not done. We also need to create the Maya uh, ambient occlusion node. To do this, I'm going to search it. I'm going to type in MIB underscore AMB, and you can see it jumps to the top. Go ahead and click on it, and now we have these two, these two different nodes, but now we need to connect them. This is going to send the output information into the input of the surface shader. To do this, you middle mouse click over this ambient occlusion and you can see that you get this little plus sign on the bottom right hand corner of your cursor drop it on top of the surface shader once you do you get this drop down menu we're going to connect it to the default settings and now we have this connection here what I want to do next is I want to assign the surface shader onto your model there's different ways of doing this whichever method you want to do it go ahead and select it I'm going to go ahead and select my model and now I'm going to right mouse click over this object and tell it to assign material to selection and what you have here within your screen you're going to notice that I'm going to close this window it goes dark it looks like a silhouette uh, what we have we created our ambient occlusion node and you're going to see what ambient occlusion does it creates uh, it gives you the results of what you might consider an ambient light. Let's go and look at this and I'll explain what it what it's doing once we can see a sample. Uh, first I want to change my render settings. Uh, for these demo purposes uh, I want to make sure that under my common tab that my image size I do have HD 720 which is kind of large. I'm going to make this smaller. I'm going to make sure that I have maintained with height ratio turned on let's do half of this from 1280 to 640 and you can notice once I click elsewhere it's going to automatically update this great to do this we need to change or we need to make sure that our render using is set to mental ray by default it might be set to Maya software but since we enabled a mental ray and we're using a mental ray render node we need to use mental ray uh, make sure within the quality settings I'm going to change this to reduction to give me a high quality sample and let's go ahead and cl close this just click once within this window just to make sure it's updated and we are going to render out our current frame and you can see this is what it looks like with ambient occlusion it's a proximity based render we did not create a light but what you get and uh, the areas where the surfaces are closer to one another you can see that it creates these shadows it makes them darker on the surface but areas that are do not have a close proximity to another surface you could see that they're brighter so it's creating highlights and shadows on your surface without creating any lights 
Uh, but we're going to change this. We're going to change some settings. Uh, but also notice the background. The background, it's black. It's this white, <laughs> white bright model on a black background. I want to change this. I want to create this neutral looking background. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use the CV curve tool to create a profile curve, to create, um, uh, to create a seamless background. Uh, I'm then going to revolve this profile curve to create what looks like a bowl shape, and this will serve as my background. Uh, so instead of creating a box which gives me distinct corners. I don't want that. That's going to distract from my image for my model. I want to have my focus of attention on my model. So let's go ahead and do that right now before we change some of these settings within my ambient occlusion node. So this will only take a, a quick moment. Um, I'm going to switch to my uh, side view here. So let me go ahead and press uh, A to show everything, show all. And you can see right here you can see it's a, a black silhouette model, which is fine. Um, but if you notice, let's see, I already brought my camera out so I could see it, but by default it's hidden. In order to show it, you need to go to display, go to, I'm sorry, go to window outliner. You're going to have this group. It might be group one if you don't have any other group, or it might be group and a number, the last group. You might have to scroll down. I'm going to expose this. I'm going to expand this. I, you have this turntable camera. Um, the reason I want to see it is so that I could make sure that I create my profile path beyond it. Uh, by default, it's hidden, but you select it and tell it to display uh, show selection. So anything that's grayed out, you can see up here my other cameras, how they're grayed out. Uh, we can't see them. So I, I don't want to bring my fun camera or use those. But uh, I, I want to be able to see where my turn turn table camera is at and the only reason I want to see it is so that I'm going to move it uh, so that I could see where it's at and you can see that I'm going for this to the side over here you can see that's the furthest where it goes and I'm gonna use my CV curve tool to create a profile path that goes up and back I'm gonna create like a bowl shape so let's go into Create CV Curve Tool Option Box. I just want to make sure that the curve degree is set to cubic. I'm going to close this window. I'm going to be using the shortcut to snap to grids, which is pressing and holding down X on your keyboard. Uh, I'm going to press and hold down X. I'm going to click here at the origin axis. I create my first point. I'm just going to click several points along the uh, this axis right here. And once I get beyond the camera, I could go ahead and I could let go of X, turn off my snap to grids, and I am going to go ahead and go up. I'm going to just zoom out just a bit so I could see how far I want to go up. I want to make sure that this profile path is going to be tall enough so that within my turntable camera view, uh, it's not being displayed. And I'll show you what I mean. I don't want to make a sharp turn up. Yeah, I'm just going to go make it subtle, kind of come up this way. Great. Once I have what my path created, press return, and now I have this path. We're going to switch to the surfaces menu set, which I'm already in, and we're going to revolve this. So I'm going to go into surfaces, revolve option box, uh, and go to edit reset settings just to make sure that my settings are reset. I could use these default settings. What we're going to do, the surface degree is cubic, so it's going to be smooth. Start sweep of 0 and sweep to 360. It's going to create a complete 360 degree. For the curve range, I'm going to tell it complete and output geometry. I'm going to use nerves. This is going to create this nice turnaround shape. And let's go ahead and revolve. And you can see it creates this bowl shape. Let's switch to our perspective view and you can see the shape that's created. It's this nice bowl shape here. Now let's go into my turntable camera. This is important here. You can see how with my resolution gate, you can see that my surface shape, it's, uh, it goes beyond my border, which is great. Uh, what I want to do, I want to assign my surface shader also to this bowl shape. So using any method, I'm going to, I selected it, click and hold down the right mouse button. I'm going to tell it to assign existing material surface shader. 
you can see everything goes black. Let's go ahead and render out the scene. Right now I do have my default render settings. And we need to change some settings now. So if you look at this right here, it looks grainy and it also looks dark. What happened? We need to change some of our settings. So let me go ahead and make this window a little bit smaller. So we're going to open up our Hypershade again. I'm going to go into Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. So I need to see my ambient occlusion. I'm going to click on the surface shade and I'm going to press this button right here which shows me the input connections. It shows me this, these settings at the bottom. I'm going to double click ambient occlusion which brings it within my attribute editor. I can close my hypershade window now. And now we get to play with some settings. First, samples. This is going to determine, uh, you see this grittiness? That's related directly to samples. Right now it's set to 16. I'm going to jump this up to 128. The more samples, the smoother this uh, resolution. I'm just going to select half of it and I'm going to render this region and you're going to see that it's going to look a lot smoother. As you increase samples, it's going to give you even smoother results. But is it is this play of uh, different settings and render time. If you increase this too much, it's, it'll look a lot smoother, but it will also take a longer to, to render out. I'm going to determine that 128 is fine. But now also notice what's going on. I'm just going to deselect this so that I can get that red box um, so it could disappear, uh, the render region. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to change some other settings. I am going to change, first I'm going to focus on this setting which is set for max distance. Max distance is set to zero. Uh, with max distance set to zero, it's going to apply ambient occlusion onto your entire scene. I'm just going to select a smaller section. I, actually I could do this other side. I'm going to change this to 1. I'm going to render this little area. With max distance, that means that only areas that are within a distance of 1 are going to be rendered out. You can see these areas, these crevices, how you can see these settings, but everything else is lost. As you increase this, I'm going to change max distance to 10. You can see that it's going to show a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and jump to 100. Oh, let's see. Let me select my render region area. Now it's set to 100. And you can see that we could see a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and because I want to make sure that this area, the top, is also included, I determined that a setting of 150 was sufficient for mine. Uh, your mileage may vary. This is where you're going to have to use uh, uh, different uh, experimentation to see what what works for you. So if this is too dark, you know, or too light, uh, you can go ahead and change that. Next is the spread. The default value is set to point at point eight. This is the distribution of the shadows. If you go all the way down to zero, for example and render this out, you're going to see that you're going to get these really sharp contrasting edges. You can see this is a shadow, this is the highlight. So you have no, like, almost like no gradient whatsoever, uh, no diffusion. So as you increase this, let's do this to point to 5. Let me go ahead and select my ren render region. Here, I'll, I'll go ahead and use this side now. You can see that it starts to have more of a diffuse. I have this very distinct highlights. If I go to point 0.5 this time, render out this area here, I get very distinct highlights, very distinct shadows. Let me go ahead and change this back to point 0.8, which we already have done. You can see it's a lot softer. And of course, if you go all the way to 1, it's going to be a lot 
more diffused. So whatever settings you want to use, I'm going to go ahead and stick to the point 0.8 because I think that setting looks good. I'm going to go ahead and render out this entire scene. And it gives me these nice looking results. Uh, with ambient occlusion, as you can see, we created no lights. And it gives us a great way of looking at your model without any color, without any textures. Uh, the end result kind of looks like a clay model, which looks good. It gives us a, an opportunity to focus on our scene. Uh, now, if you remember my previous one that had the black background, I now have this nice, diffused, neutral looking background. I have my complete attention onto the model. Um, and uh, in my opinion, I think this uh, is looks good for uh, um, to view your model, to view your modeling work. So what we're going to do in our next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to render this out. So um, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comment sections. Um, hopefully you enjoyed and you found this useful. All right, thank you.